Peter Parker's life was torn asunder by Kindred. Now, how will he go about rebuilding it? Well, let's hop into the pages of Amazing Spider-Man issue number 57, a post-mortem to last remains, and find out together, shall we? So then, as we join this newest Nick Spencer story, we pick up with Spider-Man not long after exiting the crypt. He finally gets to meet back up with Mary Jane, and oh boy, does he have a lot to say to her. Keep in mind, only a moment ago, he assumed that she had died at the hands of the Green Goblin, and before that, before she had went away to be an actress again, he was planning to actually propose to her, so it's very emotional for him. The Order of the Web is there too, and Spider-Gwen naturally has a lot of questions, mainly what the hell was all of that? This kindred guy was who, your best friend, and he hated you that much, and he dragged us into all of this too? What could you possibly have done to make that man so angry? And again, in what is becoming a major theme now moving forward in Spider-Man, Peter has no idea why Kindred is so mad at him and why he was willing to move heaven and earth to try and destroy him. We as the reader know we have a pretty good idea, but Spider-Man is going to have to dig a little deeper if he wants to figure out what it's all about. But what if Spider-Man didn't want to dig any deeper? What if he just wants to leave it where it is? It's here we actually pick up with the end of the previous issue. Spider-Man makes it to Ravencroft Asylum to finally have it out with Norman Osborn. Norman reveals to Peter what we found out in the previous issue, and that is that he didn't really break bad all over again. His sins are still very much cleansed at the hands of the Sin Eater, and that he only pretended to be evil so Fisk would help him recapture his son. Norman launches into a big apology screed, saying that he could never properly apologize to Peter for all the horrible things things that he's done to him in his life, but that he actually is trying to turn over a new leaf right now. And that for once in his ill-begotten life, he's actually not being selfish, instead choosing to dedicate all of his time and focus on saving Harry from the horrors that he inflicted upon him too. And that only if the two of them can put aside their animosity and work together can they actually break on through to Harry and untangle the web that is kindred. But here's the thing, Peter wants no frickin' part of it. And admittedly, he has all the reason in the world to know not want to take this ride. He's done it one too many times before. Oh, Osborne, you're changed. You found a drug cocktail that worked, or you had amnesia. The sad truth is, stories that start like this always end the same for Spider-Man. Norman ends up going crazy, becoming the Green Goblin again, and a good person ends up getting killed. Peter says that if he's found out one thing during this whole kindred escapade is that his priorities were all in the wrong place. He hasn't been focusing on the people that matter most to him. Instead, he's been focusing on people like the Osborne. When Spider-Man started as a hero, all he wanted to do was make the city a safer place to help tilt the scales of justice, yet somewhere along the way it became a big Shakespearean blood feud with this father and son duo. And now Spider-Man has decided he's not gonna do it anymore. If Norman really is true to his word about being good, then he'll keep Kindred caged up, and if Peter even hears just the slightest note that he's free, then he's gonna come down on both of them like a ton of bricks. In fact, he may come down on them earlier than he expected, as Norman tries to stop Spider-Man from leaving, only for Spider-Man to quite literally physically assault this guy despite the fact that he was no danger. In fact, as he beats on Norman, we see several flashes of Kindred beating on Spider-Man. Hmm, perhaps Kindred's plan actually did end up working after all. Maybe he really did beat Spider-Man. After all, he's gonna be shell-shocked for a long time going forward, and if he continues to lash out like this, there's no telling how far the webhead can fall. Now that's all pretty bad, but would you believe me if I told you things could get so much worse, the cops end up cleaning up the crypt that Kindred was operating out of, including all of the corpses of Spider-Man's closest friends and family that he dug up, including the original Gwen Stacy and Uncle Ben. But as Carly Cooper quickly finds out, there's something wrong with the body count. No, there's not one missing like you might assume there is. There's an extra body there. One belonging to Mary Jane Watson, which begs the question, if there's a dead Mary Jane in the city morgue, then who's sleeping next to Spider-Man right now as the comic comes to a close? And so that was Amazing Spider-Man issue number 57, everybody. And once again, just when I think I know where Nick Spencer is going with this Spider-Man book, he ends up zigging instead of zagging. Kindred may have been defeated and unmasked in this issue, but that doesn't mean that he isn't going to still be dangerous or be a force hanging over Spider-Man's life going forward. In fact, as we see with Peter's behavior here, Kindred may already have seeped inside Pete's mind, and now he's acting out of character, becoming more aggressive and unhinged. Perhaps a little taste of what Harry himself 
himself encountered what with the whole dying and being yanked back to life thing. Speaking of life and death, I'm very much intrigued by this Mary Jane mystery, especially as all throughout this arc it seemed that Mary Jane may actually remember more of what happened in one more day than she was letting on. Is the corpse Carly Cooper found the original Mary Jane corpse and the one we've been following is also a brand new creation of the brand new day? I don't know. Will this be the key or catalyst for Peter to finally unravel what it is he did to Harry, the sin he had committed, the deal he made with the devil, and why his best friend is so mad at him? Or, and follow me on this one, we haven't seen the chameleon in a bit and that guy's been gunning for Spider-Man ever since the end of Hunted. This would be a good way to get back at him. Overall, I think I'd feel comfortable giving this one a solid 8.5 out of 10. This was good stuff. Hey there everyone, Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.